Hi and welcome back. So for years, it has been believed that inflammation does increase with age, quietly fueling age-related diseases like heart disease, dementia and diabetes. And remember that heart disease kills more people globally than any other cause, surpassing cancer, infectious diseases and also accidents. According to the World Health Organization, cardiovascular diseases were responsible for 17.9 million deaths in 2019, accounting for roughly 32% of all global deaths. And despite the work that's being done and the money that is being spent, this is still on the rise. Back to inflammation. A new study of indigenous populations challenges the hell belief that inflammation will inevitably increase with age. And this new research could actually reshape how most of us think about aging itself. Now, for decades, researchers have identified chronic low-level inflammation as one of the primary drivers of age-related diseases. This has been named inflammation. Think of it as your body's immune system stuck in overdrive, where it's consistently fighting battles that don't really exist. This then gradually wears down your organs and also all of your metabolic systems. But inflammation might not be a universal feature of aging after all. Instead, it could be a byproduct of how we live in modern society. The research that was published in Nature Aging compared patterns of inflammation in four very different communities around the world. Two groups were from modern industrialized societies, specifically older adults who lived in Italy and also in Singapore. The other two were indigenous communities who live a more traditional lifestyle. They were the Jimane tribe who hail from the Bolivian Amazon and the Orang Asli who live in the forests of Malaysia. The researchers analyzed blood samples from more than 2,800 people, looking at a wide range of inflammatory molecules that are known as cytokines. Their goal was to find out whether a pattern seen in earlier studies where certain signs of inflammation rise with age and are linked to disease. They wanted to see if this also appeared in other parts of the world. The answer, it turns out, is, unhelpfully, both yes and no. Among the Italian and Singaporean participants, the researchers found a fairly consistent inflammation pattern. In that, as people aged, levels of inflammatory markers in the blood, things like C-reactive protein and tumour necrosis factor, rose together. High levels were linked to a greater risk of chronic diseases that included kidney disease and also heart disease. But in the indigenous populations, this inflammation pattern was absent. The same inflammatory molecules did not rise consistently with age and they were not strongly linked to any age-related diseases. And because of that fact, they see high rates of infections from parasites and pathogens and their inflammation levels are very often elevated. That said, this did not lead to the same rates of chronic diseases that are common in the industrialized nations. Despite high inflammatory markers, the Amazon tribe experienced very low rates of conditions such as heart disease, diabetes, and also dementia. These results raise important questions. One possibly is that inflammation, at least when measured through these blood signals, is not a universal biological feature of aging. Instead, it may arise in societies marked by a high calorie diet, low physical activity, and a reduced exposure to infections. High calorie, Western style diets are often seen as a key reason for age related inflammation. In other words, chronic inflammation linked to aging and diseases might not simply result from an inevitable biological process, but rather from a mismatch between our ancient physiology and our new modern environment. This new study seems to hint that this is true for communities that live a more traditional lifestyle where people are more active, they eat differently and are exposed to far more infections. The immune system may work there in a very different way. In these groups, higher levels of inflammation might be quite normal, a healthy response to their environment, if you like, rather than a sign that the body is breaking down with age. Remember that inflammation is a healthy and an essential response to injury or infection. Well, at least in the short term. When you injure yourself, your body detects harmful invaders like bacteria or viruses. When working, 
When working correctly, your body's immune system activates an inflammatory response. This is your body's way of protecting itself and then healing itself. It does this in a number of different ways. Increased blood flow transports immune cells, nutrients and oxygen to the damaged area. Your white blood cells target and destroy pathogens and then remove any dead cells. Chemical signals like cytokines and prostaglandins trigger pain, redness and swelling, which may well feel unpleasant in the short term, but it's all part of the repair process. Another possibility is that inflammation still occurs in all humans, but it might appear in different ways, ways that are not captured by measuring inflammatory molecules in normal blood tests. It could be happening at the cellular or the tissue level, where it remains invisible to the blood tests that were used in this research. But why does this matter? Well, if these findings are confirmed, they could have significant consequences. Firstly, they could well challenge, they could well challenge how we diagnose and treat chronic inflammation in aging in the future. Biomarkers used to define inflammation in European or Asian populations might not apply in other settings or even among groups within industrialized nations. Biomarkers that define aging in some populations might not necessarily apply to others. Second, they suggest that lifestyle interventions aimed at lowering chronic inflammation, things such as exercise, changes in diet, or drugs targeting specific inflammatory molecules might have different effects in different populations. What works for people living in cities might be unnecessary or even ineffective for those who live a more traditional lifestyle. Finally, this research serves as an important reminder that much of our knowledge about human health and aging comes from studies conducted in wealthy industrialized nations. And more often than not, the cohorts tend to be small and comprise of younger, healthier people. And when, when it comes to aging and the effect of drugs or supplements, this could render some of these studies very inaccurate. This has been demonstrated to some degree with the use of NAD boosters. Many NMN and NR studies are carried out on younger, healthier participants. Indeed, some trials actively reject volunteers at the recruitment stage who've got age-related diseases. But in older people who have, say, one or two age-related conditions like diabetes or hypertension, quite profound benefits have been seen. And I've read this in the comment sections of many of my videos. And I, for one, have felt and seen the benefits of taking NMN, especially when I increased my dose to 1.5 grams a day and then I switched the dosing to earlier in the morning. The skeptics always revert to comments like, if it isn't a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study, the results just cannot be trusted. But would you trust, or let's just say consider, taking a supplement if you'd seen testimonials from hundreds of people who are over the age of 50 and have been taking said supplement for more than five years and who have said that they've seen and felt the benefits? Or would you dismiss it out of hand because of a previous randomized, double-blind, placebo control study of, say, 30 people, all of whom were fit and healthy and were aged between 25 and 45 and were then taking a very small dose indeed. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And also, when it comes to scientific studies, remember what Andrew Huberman said. Just to take a step back, I know a lot of people out there, are like if there isn't a double-blind, placebo-controlled trial, you know, random random trial, then why would you ever take something? And then there are a lot of people like David or me or a lot of people out there who think, well, if there are some mouse data or something safe, why wouldn't I try, right? Because when it comes to longevity, nobody wants to be in the control group. Back to the study. Findings from these groups cannot automatically be assumed to apply worldwide. The researchers are clear. The study, they say, is really just the beginning. They urge other researchers to dig much deeper, using new tools that can detect inflammation, not just in the blood, but within tissues and cells where they say the real story of aging may actually be unfolding. Just as importantly, they also call for more inclusive research that spans the full range of the human experience and not just the wealthy, urbanized corners of the world. They say that, at the very least, this study offers just an important lesson. What they thought was a universal truth about the biology of aging might instead just be a very local story shaped by the environment, the lifestyle, and the way that people live. On a personal note, and I think I'd like to see what you think in the comment section below. Do you agree or disagree with me? 
What if these more traditional communities were forced to eat the standard American diet? Now, I think they would start to show the negative effects of inflammation well within this time span of a single generation. Indeed, this has been seen in healthy Japanese individuals who did emigrate to Hawaii. It didn't take long for them to become obese and start to contract the diseases of aging at a younger age. This when compared to those who had stayed back in Japan. Indeed, a number of studies propose that Amish populations, particularly the adults, tend to have lower rates of dementia and cognitive impairment than the general US population. Now, some may say this is just down to genetics, but the studies also cite a more physically active outdoor lifestyle. Also, their diets have less processed food and there is a stronger social cohesion and much more multi-generational living. I know that I certainly saw and felt a profound difference when I started to eat a more whole food diet and started to regularly exercise. As I said earlier, I'd love to know what you think. Are the majority of health related issues, specifically in Western populations, down to eating and in some cases overeating an ultra processed diet?